The next topic we're going to be talking about today is primary biliary cirrhosis. This is a chronic progressive disease, uh, cholestatic liver disease, that's actually caused by autoimmune. Primary basically means we don't really know what's causing it because there are other secondary causes of uh, biliary cirrhosis. But the most important thing about the definition we have to realize is this is an autoimmune destruction. of the intrahepatic bile duct. So let me draw that out. If you look at this image right here, which I'm just going to reproduce over here. This guys over here that you're looking at they all live in the liver. So the intra, inside, hepatic, the liver, so autoimmune, so you're making antibodies. You're binding, constantly causing inflammation of the liver. And also, but not just the liver, they're inflaming the intrahepatic bowel ducts. So what happens? We get inflammation, you get eventually remodeling, you get repair, you get strictures, right? Eventually, if you get another inflammation again, eventually what happens? They form a scar. They become cirrhotic. So they get cirrhosis of the liver, eventually. But it's autoimmune destruction of the biliary tree that starts with, okay? Where do we normally find this? Middle-aged women. It's always a young woman that will come into the ER. What would be their presentation? They're gonna come in and talk about right upper quadrant pain. They jaundice. Why they jaundice? Check this out. All the nice, beautiful bile that's supposed to be going through this intrahepatic ducts, they're blocked. Right? Everything is strictured. Everything is already what? It's been damaged. So they all back up into the liver. Both conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin start spilling into what? Into the bloodstream. When bilirubin spills into your bloodstream, what happens? You got a lot of bowel salts, right? You start to itch a lot, a lot of itching. You look at their eyeball, it's yellow. Tell them to open their mouth <coughs> and stick out their thumb. <coughs> and right under the front of them, that little thing right under, it looks yellow. That's how you know. Now, another thing is they're tired, they're fatigued. One more thing you're going to notice also is they do build up a lot of cholesterol. Now, let me explain why that happens. Remember we talked about how cholesterol is made in the liver, like it's um, used up in the liver, broken down and shunted down into the, um, into your gallbladder. Now, they have to go to the biliary pathway, right? If the, the biliary ducts inside your liver is not working, all the cholesterol that you get shut into the liver, they can't go in. So you start to back them out into your bloodstream. Now you look into their eyeballs, you see what? You see xantho you know, xanthomas, right? This cholesterol deposits right under their eyes. You look at the back of their shin, right by the calcaneus, you see xanthelasmus, right? Cholesterol deposit, right? Achilles xanthomas, you see xanthelasmus around their eyes, and you're like, wow, why do you have a lot of cholesterol? So, this is one of the clinical features you're going to see. So, we're going to have to order labs to find out exactly what's going on. So, lab-wise, you're going to see a cholestatic LFTs. What does that mean? Cholestatic LFTs. Because this is intrahepatic, it will mean that AST, more importantly, the alkaline alanine transferase, sorry, is going to be highly elevated. Because why? Because the autoimmune, it's intrahepatic, it's on the liver. If you think it's by this antibodies are making antibodies against this uh, intrahepatic ducts, it's going to be affecting what? Because everything is back is going to damage some of those beautiful looking uh, hepatocytes. So you, they just got to start the injury to the liver will cause you to have high ALT. Now, on the other hand, 
How can the fast proteins will be elevated, right? Because all those strictures, those inflammations of, the, of those intrahepatic ducts. It's all coming from the biliary tree, right? Elevated total bilirubin will be high, right? Both conjugated kind of going to give you a mixed picture, but conjugated and unconjugated because it depends on how long they've had it. Usually the young middle-aged women, right? But the key thing you got to know for your boards, right? You got to know this. You're going to shine an every rotation to go on to. What antibody are we going to order to actually know this guy, lady's got a primary bilirubin cirrhosis? It's called anti-mitochondrial antibody AMA these are IgM immunoglobulins binding constantly binding to the intrahepatic ducts you got to know that it's extremely important this is the key okay if that comes back positive it's specific 90 to 95% specific so you really have to know that if a patient is coming right up a quadrant pain John is itching fatigue, they've got all this cholesterol, we check their cholesterol level, it's high. High cholesterol, right? Remember the xanthelasma, the, 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 um, the xanthomas, they start to develop. They're also prone to what? Osteoporosis. That's another thing you want to know. But how do we really, really grill this down and know the definite diagnosis? You have to take a biopsy. You take a needle, you stab them, well, don't stab them, you penetrate that, take a bit, bite off their liver, and you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see on the pathology, you send it to pathology like, hey, all the ducts are constricted. We can't really see that much. They've been damaged. That gives you the definite diagnosis. Unfortunately, we can't really use ultrasound or CT to rule out this problem. How do we treat it? It's symptomatic. They're itching a lot. They're itching and itching and itching. We've got a drug for that. Cholestyramine. So, I always like this interesting concepts, which is pretty straightforward, right? Coli tyramine. I don't think he has an S. Coli tyramine. Styramine. This is a bile acid request because this is the stuff, it's the bile acid on the skin that's causing irritation and itching. So when you take coli styramine, it binds to those bile acids, you poop it out. We give another treatment, or so. Deoxycholic acid. That's another medication we give for these patients. And it's kind of like an hydrophilic bile acid. It kind of slows the progression of the disease. At the end of the day, the prognosis for this patient is really bad. We're going to have to do a liver transplant. That's the most we can do. So we have to put this patient on the liver transplant list so they can get a new liver. And that's the only way we're going to have to keep the disease out of the way. Okay, so don't forget primary biliary cirrhosis. Okay, we talked about it. It's cirrhosis. Why? Because it's coming from inf autoimmune inflammation of the intrahepatic ducts. So don't forget that. It's an autoimmune in nature. It gets strictures with oily labs. It gives you a mixed picture, cholestatic LFTs. You give them cholestyramine, chol uh, arsidioxycholic acid, and you give them a new liver. And that's how we treat it. Okay, I hope that was very informative. Keep that in mind. AMA anti mitochondrial antibodies, very important antibodies you have to order for this patient so you can save their life. All right, have a good one. Bye bye.